Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Today, we want to throw a look at the new DJI Phantom 4 and we want to find out what are the new features, what is the pricing and is the DJI Phantom actually worth its pricing? Let's just get started right now and I gotta head back inside because it's kind of cold in Canada. I'm used to German winters and this is kind of different. Okay, bye bye, I gotta go, gotta warm up my feet. Okay, actually the housing's over there. <laughs> Okay guys, I'm back indoors, enjoying a warm drink. And now I'm ready for the talk about the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4, when we're now taking a look at it, looks different to the Phantom 3 series. Even though DJI calls it a completely redesigned uh, look, I wouldn't call it redesigned. I would call it a pregnant and um, stripeless look. And um, yeah, it's the pregnant stripeless Phantom 4. No more cool stripes and it's a little bulkier, but we can live with that. But first of all, we should take a look at the material because the material is quite more important than the look only. The material is supposed to be reinforced, which means that shell cracks shouldn't be happening as easy as on the Phantom 3 series anymore, which is quite cool because the, uh, the, the shell cracks around the motors were quite annoying on the Phantom 3 series. So I'm quite happy about the reinforcing of the material. Not only the housing is bulkier, but the battery as well. And it stores 5,350 milliamp hours in total, while the P3, for example, only stored 4,480 milliamp hours, if I can say stored, when it comes to electricity. So it's a lot stronger and the flight time is extended to 25% longer flight time, which makes in total around 28 minutes. Even though I cannot assure anything, of course, I don't know if they tested it under the perfect circumstances only or if they tested it under normal circumstances with, I don't know, a little wind and flying faster and up and down and something like that. We don't know, but the flight time is extended. And um, yeah, the, the battery is stronger and it's heavier and it's bigger and it's a little pricier as well. The Y-shaped gimbal bracket holds the camera in place and actually it does not add any new features or something like that. Um, the only thing it does, it holds the camera stable. Maybe it fixed the tilted horizon or something like that. It's more durable, of course, than only having uh, one motor holding the camera in place. And the only cool change is that they placed the, 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 the largest part of the gimbal inside the Phantom's body. So if you crash, I don't know, into a tree or something like that, um, probably your gimbal won't break anymore, or at least it won't break as easy. Um, as with the old gimbals on the Phantom 3 series, for example. I am actually quite disappointed in the camera because they didn't really change a lot. They changed, I don't know, the, the lens at the inside, it's in a spherical lens and it's supposed to be sharper and better and I don't know, everything that's possible, possibly positive. And um, I don't know, I haven't been testing it out yet, but I would have wished for a zoom function a lot. I was wishing and hoping that they implemented it, but they were not. And um, they didn't even really work on the frame rates and stuff like that. 4K still comes with a maximum of 30 frames per second. Full HD offers 120 frames per second. It was 60 frames per second on the Phantom 3. So they doubled that and uh, the stills are still stuck at 12 megapixels. So I'm not quite happy with the camera. The camera is good, of course, as with the Phantom 3 series, but they didn't really change anything. So, of course, they change a lot internally, but they didn't really change something when it comes to the filmmaking part. So I can zoom in. I do not have any new functions. The photo resolution is still pretty, pretty low and weak. So I'm not really happy with the camera. Next to the main camera, DJI added four more cameras to its new DJI Phantom 4 copter. Two at the front and two at the bottom. And they are working as an anti-collision system. So they... Um, they look for obstacles in front or below the copter and uh, I am actually again disappointed because there are no cameras in the back or on the sides or on the top even and I might say it's, it's nice to have that function but I wouldn't have been buying the copter only for that feature if I wanted to have a perfectly working obstacle avoidance system only having two cameras at the front and at the bottom that wouldn't have made the day for me. So. Actually, the system is supposed to work at a range of 0.7 meters till 15 meters, which makes 2 feet till 49 feet. 
the um, the front camera has a range of 60 degrees and the uh, b the cameras below have a 30 degrees angle range and that is quite okay but again I would have liked cameras all around the body at the sides and at the back and at the top as well maybe not at the top but maybe even that so they are I don't know comparable with unique Typhoon H still and um, Yes, it's, it's, it's nice having that feature, but it's not the wow effect that I was looking for when, I, I don't know, the, the change was a lot bigger when the P, P3 got released. The jump from P2 to P3 series was a very, very big jump, and now the jump from P3 to P4 seems to be, I don't know, a mid-cool jump. I mean, it's still an awesome feature to have. I have seen many crashes in, I don't know, front flight. Um, I know people crash into buildings or trees or something like that. So having that feature is pretty cool. Or especially if you're flying low to the ground with obstacles or something like that all around you. Or in the, in the forest. Um, I'm not even sure if it works with little branches. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it will um, detect the big, big trees. So it's, it's okay. Let's just say the collision avoidance system looks okay. A very positive thing about the P4 is that the propellers are positioned higher than on the Phantom 3, which means that if you're flying forward, especially if you're flying fast forward, uh, you won't see the uh, the propellers in the image, so it, they won't disturb the image and you won't have to crop in the image to not have the propellers looking up. And that is actually quite a nice thing and I was wishing for that to come true and that came true at least. And now that we are already talking about the propellers, let me mention that DJI came up with push and release propellers so no more screwing or something like that. Um, just put them on there and release them after flying. That's quite nice. Not the biggest deal, but nice having it. When it comes to flight modes, DJI really worked on that. And that is the main change why you would want to buy a Phantom 4. First of all, we're having the position mode, which is the basic GPS and GLONASS flying mode. And uh, that's just for normal flying. Next, we're having the intelligent flight modes, just as on the P3 series with POI, Core's Lock, Home Lock and stuff like that. Very, very nice to have. Next, we're having a sport mode. And that is pretty cool. The Phantom 4 is able to fly at a speed of 72 kilometers per, per hour, which makes 20 meters per second compared to only 16 meters per second with the Phantom 3. So it's a lot faster and that is actually quite cool. But I gotta mention that from the material that I've seen, um, the gimbal works differently uh, in, the, in the sport mode than in the normal mode. So for um, aerial filming, the sport mode isn't really useful. While for fun flying and racing, it's a really, really cool thing to have um, the ability to fly 72 kilometers per hour. The ATTI mode is still the same, fly without um, the help of satellites, quite nice. And next up we're having tap fly. Tap fly is a new mode and you can simply tap at a target and the Phantom 4 will fly towards that target and with the anti-collision system activated you can of course you could of course you could be in the woods and you could say okay I want to go there and the Phantom then flies its way makes its way on its own you don't have to do anything and the cool thing is that with the collision avoidance system activated the Phantom won't crash into anything in front of it so that is actually pretty pretty nice the active track function is the most adorable thing and that is the main reason why one would want to buy the Phantom 4. You only tap at an obstacle, could be you, could be a car, could be whatever you want and you start moving around and the camera follows you around, the, uh, the camera repositions itself, it's really really fantastic and the cool thing about it is the, the person or obstacle at the ground um, does not need a GPS or GLONASS or any kind of a connection. So you do not need a remote controller, a phone, uh, I don't know, a, a bracelet, GPS tracker or something like that. It just works at, at the tip of your fingers. You tip at the monitor, tell the, uh, tell the Go app what to track and the Phantom will follow that object. This is a game changer. When it comes to flight safety, DJI did not implement some kind of a drop safe system, some kind of a parachute system. Would have been nice as well, but DJI added a dual compass and IMU, which gives a lot more safety uh, during flying. I don't know, probably the compass won't be having as many problems as before. You probably won't have to recalibrate it as many times as before. It's quite nice having that, less failures. 
and um, that is quite a nice deal. Next to that, VPS has been redefined and it works until a height of 10 meters now. I think it was about 3 meters before um, on the Phantom 3. Now it's supposed to work until a height of 10 meters, which is quite massive, which is quite cool. So you can, I don't know, hover indoors or something like that, wherever you need VPS and uh, have that system work until a height of 10 meters. That is actually pretty smart as well. The return to home function got redesigned and that is actually pretty, pretty cool. What have they changed? Usually it was like that. You flew your Phantom away, you lost the connection, the Phantom then um, flew up onto a, a height that you have set in the Go app before and then it returned home in a straight line and landed. So what have they changed? They changed that now the Phantom travels to the desired height and it returns. What if there is a tree or tower or whatever in the way? I have seen so many crashes with the return to home activated that happened that way. Right now um, they combined the return to home function with the activated collision avoidance system which means that if the Phantom um, detects an object, an obstacle in front of it, it knows that and it either goes around it or it simply hovers in air and that is actually a game changer. Again, no more crashes in the return to home mode. That is pretty damn cool. Last but not least, let me mention that DJI is still using Lightbridge 1, which means 720p live signal and a range of 5 kilometers or 3 miles. That has not been increased since the Phantom 3 series yet, but I think that is enough for, say, flying. Even though many will say, no, Tom, it's not enough. I need even more power. I would say for safe flying, that is absolutely enough. So should one buy or not buy the Phantom 4 Professional yet? I would say go for it if you have the money. Go for it because the new active track mode is supposed to be quite awesome. So I definitely want a Phantom 4 myself because of that active track mode. Even though I'm quite disappointed in the camera, but still it's the best camera for a UAV on the market right now. Of course, compared to um, models in the same price class. I'm not talking about the X5 camera or something like that. That camera is even more powerful. And what, sh uh, what else should I say? It is a lot more stable. Um, the, the entire system is more stable by taking a look at the Compass and IMU and stuff like that. So I would go for it if I would have the money and I would not go and buy a Phantom 3 Professional anymore. So if you do not have the money, maybe you go for the Phantom 3 4K edition. But if you say, um, should I get the Professional uh, Phantom 3 or should I get the P4, I would definitely go and spend the money on the P4. And by the way, if you are going to buy a DJI Phantom 4, please buy it through the link in the video description. That way I will be able to buy one myself because I get 5% of the price. You do not ha have to pay 5% more. I get 5% that DJI usually would get. And I would get those 5% and with that money, I would then be able to buy a Phantom 4 myself and can then shoot more awesome tutorials and how-to videos for you guys. So thanks for watching guys. Please excuse the lower camera quality and stuff like that. I am not at home. I am on holiday in Canada and right now I want to enjoy the rest of the day because my girlfriend otherwise will hit me. <laughs> that's brutal. No, that's the truth. You will hit me otherwise. Bye bye. Thank you. Don't forget to tap at the subscribe button. Darf ich das benutzen? Bitte! Nein! Nein. Bitte! Nein! Bitte! Nein. Die wissen nur, dass ich Spaß mache.